No one knows precisely when tapa came to the Pacific, but it was almost certainly brought by travellers. Along with their gods and customs, they brought the mulberry tree, the source of their cloth and paper. Originally from Southeast Asia, the plant and bark cloth manufacturing first took hold in the islands north of Australia before spreading the length and breadth of the Great Ocean. The earliest tapa making that we know of in the Pacific is in Indonesia. There are very old traditions in Indonesia and then into New Guinea and there are probably old, old traditions of tapa making in New Guinea that we don't really know very much about. We just see the scattered remains of them in uh, New Guinea tapa. From the northern coast of New Guinea, the ancestors of the Polynesians, the Lapita people, colonised the Pacific, taking the mulberry with them. And finding it would not seed in the new lands, they took care in the plant's propagation, so that eventually, tapa making was practised from Hawaii in the north to the Marquesas in the east and Aotearoa in the south. In different areas of the Pacific, I think climate and soils have had a pretty strong determining effect. So tarpon making is pretty much restricted to the high islands, the ones with volcanic soils or the high vo um, coral islands. It's not found on the coral atolls. Though its names were various, everywhere it could be grown, bark cloth became a central part of life. The ancient craft developed almost infinite variety and refinement, moving beyond the utilitarian to incorporate spiritual, social and artistic functions. In New Guinea especially, there are very, very diverse traditions and in, in that area it seems to be related much more to religion and ritual. Quite often a lot of the special tarpa cloths were actually made by men to be used in ritual. And then further out into the Pacific, it still retained a very strong connection with religion, but it also came in much more relating to class differences, to hierarchy, so you get the chiefs allowed to wear tarpa, but not the commoners. We have the commoners making tarpa for the chiefs, those, those connections like that. Tarpa was also used to actually make figures of the gods and to wrap the gods, but it also had a lot more utilitarian uses in, in Polynesia especially, so it was used as clothing and, and other purposes too. The popular term tapa is Samoan, describing the unadorned edges of the cloth. In Hawaii, it's called kapa. In Tongan, ngatu. In Fiji, masi. The Māori called it ote. Few are aware, but tapa was made here in New Zealand, the mulberry having been brought on the Great Migration. These mulberry beaters found at a 16th century Waikato Pass site are some of the oldest found anywhere, but the cloth itself has not survived. By the time that Europeans arrived in the Pacific, the only Maori tapa that was being made were little thin rolls that were put through the perforated earlobe and actually worn as an ornament. That was the only use of it. But the traditions are very, very strong that it was used originally for lots of other things, maybe clothing in the early days before flax clothing developed, but certainly for other things, for making kites, for wrappings, um, uh, all sorts of, of ritual uses that we probably don't know anything about. But the actual tarpa cloth has disappeared now, so all we have left is the evidence in um, Maori tarpa beaters. <laughs>